Welcome to Ask the Experts. I'm Jill Schlesinger, editor-at-large of CBSMoneyWatch.com, and I am joined by two illustrious gentlemen this afternoon, Mr. Jack Otter. That's me. Welcome to your show. <laughs> well, thank you, Jill. You're excellent. Good to be here hey, with me. What's your title these days? Uh, executive editor. That Still. has not changed, yeah. Indeed. Okay. Yeah, I tried, but, All right. you know. No All right. luck. All right. Understood. Just told I was lucky to have what I've got. Gosh darn it. You'll <laughs> like it. And yeah, okay. Now, we also have very exciting. There, do, can you feel the excitement bubbling over? There's kind of electricity in the air. It's right awesome. Now. <laughs> it's totally awesome. Matthew is uh, the. How, was, you know, I forget, how about if I give your name, your whole name? Yes. Okay, let me do your Matthew Rothenberg. I knew that name. Matthew Rothenberg is a MoneyWatch.com blogger and editor in chief for The Ladders, the world's leading online service catering exclusively to the $100,000 and up market. Absolutely. You're kind of a snob, basically. Not personally. Yeah. Personally, I was planning on showing up in a tank top today. But I'm just but. saying, 100 grand and up. All right. Previously, he worked at Ziff Davis Media, ZDNet, CNET, and also uh, hmm. other sister organizations here of CBS Money yeah. Watch. Uh, also co-author of a book, You're Better Than Your Jobs. Or did you say new book? It's not new. It's been out for a while. It right? says new on the on the paper, but, but yeah, it's not. It was, came out last fall. Yeah, so you're a, you're a veteran already. I'm a veteran author. Um, hey, Sally, um, we, we can show all the cool Matthew pl- posts up here. Wow, so, we've, we've got, got, we've got do we this, have a Matthew yeah, vignette? Yeah, we do. We have all this stuff. So anyway, he's got lots of great resume, job, job search, career management, I would even say. Like, right? It's not just getting I, a job. It's kind of like making the most of the job you have as well. Getting that job, keeping that job. Once you're in that job... It's uh, it's every day you've got to you've got to do a little work. Can you relate? Uh, no. Okay. No. Uh, I eat bonbons with you uh, all day long. I know. I mean, wh- wh- when's our mani pedis? <laughs> <laughs> Is that this afternoon? Okay. So big week this week because we've got an employment report coming out on Friday. The Labor Department's big June report. The May report sucked. I mean, it really did. Fifty four thousand jobs added. And that was after the previous three months where we had a couple hundred thousand each month. So it's a total letdown. Don't you think, Matthew, it's like the wind got really knocked out of our sails. This has been uh, people talk about a jobless recovery. It's it's been a slow and it's uh, been a slow recovery. That's for sure. And not only that. If you have 8 million jobs disappear over the course of a few years, they're not all coming back that quickly. And, Jack, a lot of employers, they figured out how <laughs> to do more with less. They can say, hey, you know, we got rid of these three, four, five people, and the existing staff is managing, working harder maybe, but sure. why would they hire? Well, they, they wouldn't. Uh, productivity numbers have been skyrocketing, and we hope that that would translate into hires. It, it Normally, productivity numbers going up does precede hiring. We had A without B, uh, and it's not looking pretty. I mean, you hear everybody complaining about how much work they've got to do. I mean, support staff is a thing of the past. Yeah. You know, who, who when you need to do something with your health insurance or whatever it is, is there a human being who can actually assist you with that? Of course not. And those jobs are gone, and that actually worries me not only because it's a pain, but the people who were doing that yeah, where do probably they go? aren't qualified for some of the other jobs, and that's going to be rough. You know what bugs me, Matthew, since you're the here representing the whole career industry? If I read one more survey that says, like, the top 10 jobs, you need to be an aerospace engineering degree. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm a liberal arts person. Come on. Like, that's ridiculous. You're not going to make everybody into an engineer, and yet all those surveys kind of force you in that direction, there's, right? There's a lot of specialization. I mean, those specialized degrees, there's no replacing that kind of education. Uh, what you've got to do is make the most of demonstrating. It's always the story. It's the same story. You've got to demonstrate what your quantitative value is with your background. Right. You've got to do the best you can within your field. Right. Um, by the way, if you want to join our chat room, go to moneywatch.com and you can uh, go to the backslash live which is Megan just taught me was like a little special secret thing. Uh, Megan being our producer, Sally's running the board. Here's Jeff in the chat room who wants to know this. Uh, what's appropriate if an applicant has 20 years across software delivery and progressive leadership roles, currently a director, to what's, what's appropriate to include in a job application? In other words, uh, which way does he go? He's sort of leadership, he's got software development, and should he use the services of a headhunter? Okay. So three um, different questions. Two different questions, really. Like, what does I'm he seeing, lead with? I'm seeing three questions, four, five all right, in there. Okay, all right. Come um, on. You're an expert. Let's go. So, first of all, uh, there's the issue of what what's, what job 
what kind of jobs he wants to pursue. Bingo. Right? I mean, where does he want to lead with? Right. Well, what does he want to lead with? Um, sounds like like this is a this is a great track record, a solid track record. Uh, by the way, in passing, I would recommend that you emphasize the the last fifteen years of your career. Uh, just you mean I don't have to put my first job on my resume? By the way, I haven't written a resume in like twenty years, and I just started. <laughs> like someone said, maybe you should just like be on LinkedIn. The, and so, how far back do I have to go? Uh, we say that cutting it off at fifteen years, um, in terms of the dates. If you've got notable achievements that are earlier than that, those are good to include. But, you know, I mean, I'm very proud of my espresso pumping skills from, uh, you know. How earlier, was that? Did you get a good forearm? Been, no, yeah, 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 very strong. Amazing. Uh, really could maintain the espresso machine very well, but I don't include it in my resume. How did point. it help with your short um, game, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that was and I peaked so, with a great story I did age 24. Yeah. So, you know, it's yeah. been downhill since then. Yeah. What yeah. was the story? Um, I discovered that an assessor was lowering the valuations of the houses of all the people in her family. Wow. Yeah, she would actually, she was she would erase she was it. The it was tax in pencil. Assessor? She was the tax assessor. She would go into the pencil, erase the valuation, awesome. and write in a new one. That's fabulous. She lost her job. Yeah. Oh, I felt bad, but hey, you know. But it got you ahead. <laughs> so I would Can't say, tell? I would uh -huh. say to our, 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 um, our, our, uh, Caller. Our, yeah, call call caller. Let's not call. Let's say that um, the, our chat rumor, Jeff. Uh, let's chat call him Jeff. Rumor. Let's call him Jeff. Let's That's go. good. Jeff's um, the man. I would say that um, Jeff definitely wants to emphasize those leadership skills, but that comes with the territory. That comes with 20 years of experience. You're expecting some leadership, right? It's the software engineering. It's the quantifiable um, capabilities there. That are transferable that you're going to want to push um, um, in terms of really being able to sell that. Uh, People I would, say you're a leader. Yeah. You, you, you better be a leader after 20 years of, of running progressive uh, sure. groups. I would jump in and say two things. One is the job he is applying for. He's got to tailor it for the job he's applying for. So if it's a mid sized company where they need the head of the department, Clearly, leadership is crucial mm -hmm. there. If he's if he's applying to IBM, where he's going to be one of ten thousand software engineers, and you know what, there's already a senior vice president running that division, then he's going to need to tweak that resume, send a different one to IBM, where he's emphasizing his skills. And also, I to me, the quantitative stuff, the engineering, that comes out better on paper. The leadership skills is something you're really going to want to be prepared to convince the interviewer of in when the interview. When you come into the interview, what about yeah. the headhunter question? So should you work with a headhunter? Um, that's, that's a pretty open-ended question. There's a lot of varieties. I assume that, that by headhunter, um, Jack is referring to a, uh, a recruiter. There's, there's, there's corporate recruiters. There are retained recruiters. There are commission recruiters. I think you want to find out whether, this, um, whether, whether the person you're working with has actually been retained by, by a company because then they're not paying a commission and, and you're not costing a premium to the company to be hired right um that's a that's the most comfortable sort of relationship well frank in the chat room who i think is probably <clears throat> a headhunter frank you a headhunter why would jeff not want to work with a headhunter remember we work for the company not for you <laughs> so he outed himself right. so is that true i mean but then you're you're a higher cost employee Abs uh, well it's absolutely true that the um the that the recruiter works for the company and, and that's something to keep in mind at all times. People can get very frustrated. Um, professionals can get very frustrated with recruiters un, unfairly at the end of the day because um, they're doing their job. What you want to do is align your interests with that recruiter and help totally. them get, you know, you both win if you get hired. So, and, uh, you know, that's Also, that's I think that recruiters, I think it depends on the industry, right? But I do think that in certain industries, it recruiters basically hold the keys to the castle so you really you know i would never be one of these people like it's like someone who says like i would I, why well, I work with a realtor i don't know because they're like part of mls and they do all the work and yes it's a pain in the neck but it's it's kind of gives you entry into the playing field right and i think it's really good long term to get your name on that recruiter's list you know be be known by the recruiters so that when they're called in by the company they're like oh yeah sure jill she's a winner you know and 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 Keep a relationship going so the recruiter calls you. Who do you know in your industries who's good at so-and-so? Right. Listen, Give them great that's people. That's very important. If, yeah. if I'm not a fit for, for a job, if I'm approached, I do some work to, to find that recruiter some some suggestions if they want it. I, I, I do everything I can to... Uh, to, to help them out because right. I know that down the road that's gonna that's that's gonna pay off. 
All right. Um, I got so many questions. Okay. Let's, let's keep let's going keep here. Coming. Okay. Let's keep it coming here. First of all, Frank did uh, acknowledge that, in fact, he might be a <clears throat> headhunter. But we've already given you love, Frank, so don't we worry about you. it. We love you. We love Frank. Uh, yeah. Deborah's looking for a few basic rules of thumb. She wants to know um, about the chronological order. We've already talked about that, the jobs you should include, which is basically cut it off after 15 years. What if you are in a job for a very short period of time? At what point can you basically say, by the way, here in the uh, chat room, we have a guy who basically didn't make it through his probation period, mm -hmm. right? He was there for two months, three weeks. They said I wasn't a fit for the company. Should I add it to my resume Take or blow it, it up? Take it out. Take it out. Yep. E ethically, listen, um, in your resume, you don't have to include months. You can include years, okay? Yeah. Um, if it's a very short tenure, Unless you did something spectacular during that short tenure and it was circumstances beyond, you know, the company went, you you saved the department, but the company went bankrupt. <laughs> or like you did it. something really great and you helped them and then, you know, basically you they could have said they merged with somebody and, and then your job there was, was eliminated, a big right? One Very word unusual. of warning, though. On the background check, my, this happened to my wife. She's at Accenture for two weeks in the midst of her journalism career. And she just didn't bother to put it on because, you know, why take up the space on the resume? Yeah. But once she, after she got the job, the background check found an anomaly. Oh, dear. Um, they found her. Yeah. So, so, you know, the explanation is harmless and it's fine, but we should warn people that can't sure. happen. Can, do you have to stick to one page for a resume? Our rule of thumb is generally if it's five years or less in, in, in your oh career. Oh, my God. Five years or less, it should be a paragraph. <laughs> I don't even want to read a whole page. Well, my nephew's looking for a job right now. Right now, anybody wants uh, an HR, wonderful kid for HR for um, for the financial industry, please uh, get in touch really? with Really? So, is that right? Yeah. He has he gets one page. Um, if you What do if, you put on that resume if you're like, if you're how old is he? What, if you're a kid, if, yeah. you're, if you're 23 years old? I you went graduated your, from college. You got your education. He's gotten some in, ongoing education. He's fluent in Japanese. He did. Uh, huh? What? Did, yeah, he's got some good skills. So in the so. back, he's got Japanese. Hey, yeah, that's so me. cool. We'll, we'll, we'll hook him up. All right. That's one page. If you're in the middle of your career, look for two pages. Uh, very rare occasions you'll go longer, especially if it's a really tech. If you are that um, aerospace engineer. <laughs> Uh, and you've got like a and 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 your and your industry requires a big publishing history or something. You could go over. Jacqueline two says pages. that she's right at five pages right now. <sighs> five Jacqueline. pages, Jacqueline. What did you like come up with the cure for cancer? Come on, come on. They're gonna. They're that's gonna. that's only one line. Exactly. I cured cancer. Cured cancer. Yeah, that, that person's that's resume it. does not need to be long I at all. I love it. But that's but the, but we got to make that point that Jacqueline's is way too long. Anyone in that condition needs to sit down and think seriously. What do if I'm hiring for this job? What do I need to know? That's right. what goes on it, and the rest doesn't. Because the problem is they're not going to get to the good stuff. Right. If I saw that on my desk, forget about it. You forget know. Forget about it. You hey, could, Lynette yeah. wants to know. She's an unemployed editor publisher with 12 years of experience, and uh, basically she's got like zilch right now. Like in editing, publishing, not a great time and not a great field. So what? she's she's got no sure. work coming in when you say zilch. Yeah, and she said she's qualified, and but she's getting so discouraged. Okay, we'll see. Um, I had a really interesting conversation with some of the uh, some of the leading um, recruiting experts in the country, and I said, look. I've been I've been dishing out this advice for for months now to people who are feeling at the end of their rope. Um, am I am I feeding them a line or do you take this seriously? Um, do you agree with me on this? Is volunteering is is getting yourself out there and doing like volunteer work, uh, keeping yourself active in those kind of ways? Is that a meaningful thing on a resume? And, and, and across the board, they said yes. Ah. Get out there. Prove that you were doing something, you know? I mean, if you can align align it with a cause that you feel passionate, I mean, want to be a little bit careful about, <laughs> uh, you know, getting yourself uh, painted into a corner politically or something. But, right. you know, if you, can do, if you can do a good deed, prove that you're involved, that would be my first recommendation. Okay. They said, uh, you know, across the board, all these folks said, keep busy. Right. Um, here, and there's freelance work out there for editors and publishers. Not a lot, but is, it is. There it is, is so. piecemeal, I think yeah. they call that, right? <laughs> um, okay, here's a uh, someone in the chat room who wants to know how to transfer logistics skills to a sales position. Uh, you know, you don't hear a lot about a lot of people wanting to get into sales, but everyone always wants a salesperson, right? That's mm -hmm. actually one of those p career paths where it's yes. not very sexy, but everybody needs salespeople in lots of different industries. So. What if you want to make yourself a salesperson? Is that possible? 
Um, it's it's easiest to make those kind of shifts within a current company. Mm-hmm. It's always easier to uh, to approach people within the organization that you're in and say, say I want to acquire <laughs> these skills, right? Trying to do it between gigs is a lot trickier unless you can really somehow pull out the salesy bits of what you've done yeah. and say I'm ready to make a move. Otherwise, it's going to be a. It's probably going to. You're going to have to take a step back in your career. Yeah. Here's one from Dan in the chat room. Remember, if you want to join the chat, go to MoneyWatch.com and you can click on uh, our big fat banner that'll bring you right there. Uh, Dan wants to know if you have experience with a certain vendor's software, but all the positions that are available for a competing, but all the positions that are available are for a competing vendor. So, okay. right? Okay. So now how do you explain the experience as a transferable skill? In other words, I guess that his experience is one vendor, but the other vendor is basically like the one that where all the jobs are. Okay. Um, I, I think I would have to, uh, I think I'd have to know a little bit more about what the learning curve is um, in terms of being able to use um, what, what sort of software we're talking right. about. If it's a it's programming language, if it's a, I, I mean, obviously this person's in IT. Yeah. Um, um, is, there, is there any sort of certification that's required? Um, if not, if you're saying that the function is similar, uh, you could make the case and see how it flies. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's, that's right. Best, I think that's good. My best advice there. Um, this is interesting from Lori. She emails us, my current job has the worst title that I've ever had and does not <laughs> correspond. Listen, I made my title up, editor at large. So, you know, whatever. Um, it does not correspond to titles for similar jobs in many other entities. Okay. So my the current worst title. Listen, here it is. You ready? The yeah. worst title. Yeah. Intermediate analyst. Oh, that, that's a pretty that's bad a, one. That's I a bad title. That's yeah. a bad title. Yeah, sure. Depending on the entity, the same job would normally be labeled as manager, lead, even VP. <laughs> how should I display this poor <laughs> title on my? How, first of all, shouldn't she ask? Could she? Could she ask for a different title? I mean, uh, yes. to me, it's like, oh my God, you're not going to get money, but get the title exactly. at least. Yeah. For starters, that's one thing that I would that I would do. But if you have this title, okay. Can she, what should she put, should she put this crap title in her resume? And does she have to? Okay. Oh. The Oracle is going to think for a moment the here. ladders. Stop yeah. swinging in your chair. You're going to make everyone nauseous. In, in the meantime, right. I'm just going to, I'm going to throw it out there. You know, you I, I just want to see her go to her boss and say, hi, I, I, you know, I don't want any money or anything. Just, just make me a VP. Right. See how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> just do it. No, sure. but, what saying, what, but what about saying to this person, like, this title is incomprehensible in our industry. What can we do to make this title th so that it's better for the company and it's better for me so that we so that when I'm expressing myself out in the marketplace, people know what I do. Yeah. You got to get a good anecdote there that does not involve a job hunt. You know, yes. I, I was at this conference yes. and, well, you know, whatever. They wanted me to be on the panel, but I couldn't with this title. Right. You know, it didn't make sense. Something like that. that yeah. That's right. I think making the case for title change makes a lot of sense. I also think, uh, that's why I was rocking and thinking here, <laughs> um, there is a certain amount of flex in terms of how you present yourself in your resume. You don't want to misrepresent, um, but, but then again... Um, We've we've certainly talked about it with really small companies that sometimes if if you're a, if you're if you're the CEO of your own company you don't want to go out in the market and claim you're a CEO and try to uh, get a job at GM you're not going to be the CEO. Somebody could throw my hat in the ring for that. <laughs> right. Um, I think by the same token you can you can do a descriptive title here. Uh, somewhere in the body of that, you should say you're going to have to be transparent and say this is what they call me here. But <laughs> right. the intermediate, uh, whatever that that was, that's a pretty bad title. Yeah. But if she ha if she has 12 direct reports, then calling herself a manager is absolutely perfectly fine. Right, accurate. You know, that's right. That's an accurate description. Yeah. All right. Hopefully that helps you, Miss Lori. Hey, Teresa wants to know that the f whether the phrase references available upon request is necessary anymore. Kill it. Kill it. Okay. What do employers think about that? What What about, do you, Do they look for references? They'll ask you if they want them. Is that the deal? Yes. I okay. mean, if your, resum, if your references are unavailable upon request, I think you've <laughs> right. got bigger problems. That's right. That's right. Okay. And the one thing I would throw out, though, is normally the, the reference thing, once they ask for references, you're in, right? You know, yeah. I mean, unless they say, well, he's an axe murderer on weekends, <laughs> you're probably, but I think there are cases where, you know, you're, you're, you maybe you feel like your skills didn't totally translate, but you know that your old bosses just love you. 
You know, you're the kind of person who six months after you leave, a year later, they call you back and beg you to come back, right? Right. Um, I think in that case, in an interview, you want to work in the, uh, some way of getting across, you know, I just want you to know that I've had a great track record, really great relationships with previous bosses, and I, I think they might be able to offer some insight that maybe I can't hear at the table. And, you should you should come to that interview armed with your references yeah. and be yeah. ready to pull them out of your briefcase um, and, and, and hand them over right then. Yep. Right. Uh, by the way, I completely got my, a former employee a job recently oh, as okay. acting as his reference Bravo. because they told me straight up that they really liked him, but they were concerned about these three issues. And because he didn't work for me, you know, if you work for somebody, if, if you like, you still own, I'm a, out of the company, he's out of the company. It's totally different, right? Because now it's like, I'll talk, I have no problem. And uh, they asked, they said, these are our three big concerns. I addressed them. And they said, after this, we are ready to offer him the job. We were not ready before this. So I ca- counted that as a victory. Wow. And I mm-hmm. hopefully we'll get a dinner out of that. Oh, well, I was going to, yeah, what the big was. You know, so I hope it's. Mm, I think just know, a dinner. That's about not it. Quarterly checks or something. Nah, right. no, nah, it doesn't it's make just, enough money. Just a little, a little bit off the top. It's kind of <laughs> arbitrage. Right, yeah. exactly. Let me uh, get back to the chat room because it is going wacko. I love it. Um, so one of the things that someone asked KG, asked could you talk about this um, blog post now matthew you put this up um, which was called turn your re- hold on a second oh sally you're going to kill me here we go turn your resume into a search engine magnet now here's the thing about that um you, this is about the idea that you have keywords that have to be in certain places. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about that, Matthew. Okay, so uh, this was this was uh, written uh, referencing our uh, our resident search engine expert. I hope she's watching out there, Leslie. And probably Barrett. she probably put was posting on the in the chat room. That's right. <laughs> That's she, it's, yeah, she wants a little uh, little shout out. Exactly. So, um, uh, Look, nowadays a resume is not just a printed piece of paper. It's, uh, it's, it's data just like anything else that needs to be found out there. Whatever kind of search engine you're using, if it's Google, if it's, if it's LinkedIn's internal um, search engine, um, it's going to be following, it's gonna be following rules, um, and those rules are increasingly sophisticated. What you need to do is um, the words that you use in your resume need to uh, to match up with the what the what the increasingly what machines are going to be searching for, um, and they need to be placed in the right context. You mm-hmm. can't just bunch together a bunch of keywords. Uh, people used to uh, kind of gang those things together, throw them out there, and expect uh, results, and, and and it and it might work. Now it's a lot more sophisticated. You've got to you've got to pick the right words, and you've got to put them in the in the right spots. Andrew says, oh. I'm sorry, Andrew wants to know, how do you turn your resume into a search engine magnet if you are a recent environmental engineering graduate with only one year of experience? So then what do you do if it's not, if you don't have a body of work, basically? Well, so the question is, um, you've got to know what terms you're using, mm-hmm. right? You've got to pick the, uh, you've got to pick the uh, descriptors um, for your qualifications, for any experience that you do have for your education, you've got to pick those words that are going to um, that are going to be the most appealing. They're going to rise to the top of the search engines. So, I mean, if you never mention the environment in your environmental uh, um, in your environmental resume, there, uh, he's an environmental engineer, yes, was it? Yes, exactly. Um, people will do things like that. You know, they'll take it as a as a as a as a given because human beings, of course, will understand that. You know, I'm involved in to find those words. Should I look in um, job uh, descriptions? Would that be the best place? Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you should you should also be looking at yeah, you should be looking at the job description itself. Yeah. You know, uh, the if you wanna if if you wanna catch, I'm trying to think of some sort of if you wanna catch fish, you have to have the right bait, right? (laughs) Yeah, Uh, nice. I love that. I'll work on it. Keep working on that. Let me read this from Ben because I love it already. Ben in the chat room. Hey, first of all, you guys are awesome. Woohoo! All right. Um so he says he's a recent grad with a bachelor's in business administration. There's probably a lot of those. I gotta imagine. His only work experience is a marketing internship. He's currently doing some networking, checking job listings on the Internet. Is there there any specific advice for recent college grads looking for that first-time entry position? Now, Jack, I know you're a big fan of the internship thing. Yeah, I was going to say, 
I think especially given the lack of hiring right now, there's probably a lot of companies that are very reliant on their interns right now. I wonder if he should start looking. And those people are going to be leaving in the next, I mean, gosh, you know, in the Midwest and the South, schools start in like August 15th. That's right. right. You know, so should he be finding out some, some companies where they're relying on these guys, hey, I'll come fill their shoes for another three months? That's a very smart move. I mean, you, you know. want to you keep some continuity going yeah. and you want to get some experience under your belt. Um, and you want to make those connections. Should um, you just take it? But, I mean, look, you know, the, there's also the reality of should you just take a job even if it's a crap job? I think oh, I stopped huh. him again. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking here for a minute. Um, I, I would say that picking the strategic job, even if it isn't paying everything that you want, mm. if it helps to build your story, it can be worth a lot more than that initial salary. Okay. Especially at this know? guy's age. Right. They still got a pass here, I think. Right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'll, everybody I'll, starts, and everybody understands that people start somewhere. That's you need true. To, you need to forge connections okay. right now. And also, you know, don't forget about alumni groups. Don't forget mm-hmm. about, I, right? Yeah. I mean, you know. And like, call every, I would always say that, like, go through your all of your parents' friends in every single industry mm-hmm. and just set up a meeting with every single one of them. That there's a lot of people out there who have jobs. You know, there's a high unemployment rate, but there's a lot of people with jobs. Just start meeting with everybody and get your resume into the right hands or anybody's hands. And things happen in weird ways, but you got to go out there and you have to make something happen. You are selling yourself. So it's a good lesson in sales skills. That's right. Right there. Hey, by the way, here's a question from Charles, an older, older job seeker. Okay. Should he hide his age? In other words, not put a... You know, whenever I see this, I always laugh because it's like, well, you don't have the, d- the year that you graduate. Yeah. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm sure that it's not 1998 that you graduated <laughs> yeah. if the year is not on there. So what should Charles do? Should he play that game? Charles should, um, should Charles hide his age? Right. Char- Charles should he should, get a dye Charles- his hair? Charles should uh, Charles should not make a big deal out of his age. Okay. Charles does not need to include the date of his graduation. Charles does not need to um, um, uh, quantify those years of employment that go back further than fifteen years. Right. Um, Charles should not go out of his way to borrow trouble about this kind of conversation. Right. You come in. You're energetic. You're. Well, I remember Woodstock like it was yesterday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. You probably want to avoid the, uh, I don't know, the Depeche Mode references or <laughs> Which, something. Which, unfortunately, we just got. <laughs> yeah, so, so. <laughs> All right. Here's another one about interviewing. Um, we've got uh, actually the, uh, we have a tricky interview question. Ready? Yeah. Tell me about yourself. How do you answer that? That's a real tricky interview question. Yeah. And and I know you actually have that on here, so I'm gonna. But I don't. I want you. To, do you remember how you told us to answer so, that? So it's one of the you most. You have three ways to tell an interviewer about yourself, but okay. I do think that that open-ended question, which is fabulous. Well, that's the thing. Is look, you're 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 under the gun in an interview situation, right? Um, and you are inclined to babble when you're under the gun. People frequently do, um, or clam up and just freeze. This is an open-ended question. That leaves you lots of opportunity to step right into it. You can either go off on some sort of monologue about your your personal, you know, your personal history, or you can say, "What do you want to know?" Which we've characterized as the worst possible answer you can get. <laughs> you were surprising me there. I thought you can say that, really? Yeah, I don't think a, so. Oh, that's no, that's a okay. lousy yeah, answer. Good. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, what you want to do <laughs> is you want to come in with some talking points. To any interview, you want to come in with some talking points. You want to have done your research about the company, right? You want to have done your research about the, if possible, about the people that you're talking to, and you want to know what their pain points are and what they're looking to, uh, how they're looking for you to alleviate them. Mm-hmm. What are you telling about yourself? I'm going to tell you about how I'm going to make you a lot of money. Uh, yeah. I like that. You say stay focused on the most important details and highlight your accomplishments, but you also say keep it brief because that open-ended question can go on forever, right? That's right. Someone just recently told me that they I had to get a, a quicker elevator pitch uh, about, you know, I was like sort of talking about like, tell me, they said, well, tell me about how you started your career. And I started like, well, you know, when I graduated college, and they're like, no, 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 don't right. do that. Don't do that at all. Right. So that's a good lesson. But that's no, the key absolutely. point is it's the, ele- it's the elevator pitch turned into an answer 
of tell me about yourself. Right. And I think that makes sense. Okay. Here's one from Lana. How does one answer the interview question? What salary are you looking for without leaving money on the table and not pricing oneself out of the candidate pool? So let me ask you, Matthew, uh, what salary are you looking for? Answer that. Well, where, where where are we at in this discussion? I we mean, are in. Let's know. think about this for a second. When is that? Does that usually come up in the first interview, or does that usually come up later? Frequently, people want to push you into that. In the first okay, so interview. here we are in our first interview. You told me about yourself. You've got great experience. You make, of course, over a hundred thousand dollars a year because you're the ladders. Need I say more? And um, you kind of let's say let's just pretend that you make a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in your current job, mm-hmm. and you think you're really gonna you're gonna believe that you're going to make the leap into the twos right. in this job, Ooh. okay? And so you say, I say to you, I'm the employee, what are you, what do you, so what salary are you looking for? Right. Um, I think that we should talk more about the, the range of responsibilities that are in, in this job. I think that I'm going to be a great fit. I think I'm going to make a contribution. I think we need to figure out uh, what we're what we're both comfortable with, mm-hmm. and I think we should come back to this conversation. Well, that's wow. good. Now, what if hmm. I come back and say, "So, what are you making now?" You have to tell me, right? In other words, if I say, "What's your current salary?" Say, so, I'm I'm not really sure um, where that I'm where that fits into this conversation. Okay, well, if I'm, someone told me that, I'd be like, "You're out of here, goodbye." Yeah, yeah. Like, I would never be interested. I would like want to know what are you making. I'm not saying that because I would allow to. You know, I used to interview tons of people, but I was like, "What's your book? What are you making? What do you have? You work at Smith Barney. You're a broker. What did you make last year?" I might allow a certain range here. Uh huh. Right. Okay. But I'm going to uh, focus on what I'm looking for. All right. Very good. Very fair. Just want to make sure. Well, one other thing there. I, I think people do research before they go into that interview and get a sense of where they think the, the pain points are. You know, so you know that if you start to get in the 200s, they're, they're, you know, that's just not going to happen for them. Yeah. You're replacing a $110,000 person, right? right? So be prepared for that. Figure out what your answer is, I think. You know? yeah. right. Maybe I'm at 150 now, and you know, I'd really like to, to get a bump for a move. But, hey, it's a tough market. I'm flexible. Let's talk. You know? It's pretty easy to start getting a sense of if it's going to be a mismatch. Yeah. Right. When, I get that, when I get that sense, that's the time when I figure, let me start thinking about some people who are a little more junior than me that I can, mm-hmm. that I can uh, I'm provide. bringing it up for people who need a job. Yeah. Who they'd like to be at right. whatever level, but they you want know, a job. They want a they job. They want to land a job. So I how get do you that. not leave on the money on the table, right. but still get what you yeah, need? Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, and, yeah, and I think it's fair to say this is what I'm making in this job, and I'm really much, very much, you know, I'm very happy. But I'm looking to expand my role. I'm ex- I'm looking to be more of a participant That's in right. you know, blah 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 blah, and you know what I mean. You so, got to start refocusing it towards where you want to be. Right. Hey, Dan asks us how how should one answer the question? Tell me a time. When a project did not work out as you intended, in other words, that you failed, right? <laughs> and and I think that's actually a fabulous question. Yep. I mean, I used to ask the question, what did you know? What is the biggest mistake? I, I because yeah. what is the biggest, biggest trading mistake you ever made, and what did you learn from it? How yeah. did, did it change you? So wh- what about answering that? So the way not to answer a question like that is to try <laughs> to is try, try to com- compliment yourself uh, in. Uh, I just worked. I just worked too hard. <laughs> that was my. That was my. That was my fatal flaw. Is I ended up, you know, I worked seventy-two hours straight. It was terrible. Right. I, how, um, you know, I, my work ethic just got away from me. Oh, yeah. You've got to be able to with those kind of um, questions, right? Where you're, where, where they're asking you to recount an anecdote. You, you should be ready for them first of all. Yes. Right. Um, and you should. And you should demonstrate that you. People are interested in seeing um, candidates who can learn and grow from mistakes. Yeah. So, you know, if you can get a story where ultimately success followed, but there was a, you know, there was a hitch in the road. In my case, great. I could have talked about my divorce. I could say, go. well, uh, you know what? That project did not work out as planned, <laughs> but the next one I did much better. <laughs> and it's that so would, good. And that would shut it down like right. that. Boom. Right? <laughs> Move right on. Perfect. Um, here's another question here. Um, Andy wants to know, uh, after my first round interview, the interview team was concerned whether I was willing to step into the company's pressure cooker environment and do what it takes to be successful. I need to convince the, at them at the next interview that I have the moxie to be successful. 
Any advice for uh, Andy? That's a good. That's a good question. I like that one. You know, you know, Moxie was originally a soft drink. Yes, it was, and it was a strong soft drink. <laughs> mm-hmm. And only the people who had the Moxie to drink it could could make stand it. it. Okay. So, um, <laughs> wow, that's a that's you a come uh, in with like a leather jacket and some brass knuckles yeah, exactly. and say, well, I want to kick some it's ass right now. Look, it's a question of cultural fit, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, this is, this is a, this is a huge part of the, uh, this, uh, this is a huge part of the hiring process right. is, are you going to fit in? Right. Um, it's in some ways, it seems like it's, 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 it's trying to prove a, a, neg- a negative. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not too wimpy to do this job. <laughs> right. right? Do you, I know you think um, I'm a wimp, but. I wouldn't go in with pastels. Oh, um, my gosh. Why? You could be like a Golly. very manly man in your pastels. <laughs> well, what about talking about something in your work, in your workplace? In you know, I forgot to tell you about this thing that happened to me where I had to go toe-to-toe with somebody. And it was pretty intense, but I was pretty psyched that I was able to, boom, do something or tell a story around that. Look, the fact that they're coming back and asking for some specific um Examples and, and being spe- and being specific about what the concern is mm-hmm. means the door's still open. Right. This is giving you an opportunity to talk to 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 address that and and have a dialogue. Yes. And I think that coming up with some anecdotes of where you did show, um, you know, some extra um, moxie, moxie, moxie <laughs> um, is mm-hmm. is 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 a great opportunity. They're still interested in you. Right. And be able to be translate what it is that you did at that old job under different circumstances. So you got to figure out. Okay. You know, in, in our industry, it would be, well, I was at a monthly magazine, and now I'm walking into this place with de- daily deadlines. Right. So you've got to translate what it is on that monthly schedule that made you go like that. You know, 9-11 happened the day before we were out. I ripped up the magazine, put a whole one together in a day. That's right. You know, right. That, right. That's the sort of thing. That it makes sounds sense. Like, it sounds like one solid anecdote could tip the balance yeah. on yeah. this job. Hey, Justin wants to know, Mr. Rothenberg, who I guess he's talking to your father, evidently. I'm currently trying to make the jump from an accounting role into a finance role. I have found it very difficult to be considered even for entry-level positions. I'm a senior internal auditor with a publicly traded company and have experience in SEC reporting. I also worked with a small public accounting firm. What's the best way to get my foot in the door? I feel like I'm qualified to work for a bank, but just don't have the connections to get in. Hmm. Okay, so uh, once again, the opportunity to uh, to move internally um, is always advantageous. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure about this. Uh, well, I, 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 and, I, and, I, and I think that if you're working at an accounting firm, maybe one thing to do is instead of going straight to finance, a lot of the accounting firms are now consultancies, right? They have consulting arms. So maybe you go into the consultancy arm yeah. and you sort of go in the back way there. Also, I want to point out just because, I, you know, the finance world is one that I'm somewhat familiar with, with which I'm familiar to my editor here. Um, if you are like SEC reporting and all you have an accounting role, one of the places where you can actually get your foot in the door is through compliance, is they're always looking for compliance professionals. They're looking for people, and every single bank is dying to hire <laughs> compliance professionals. I happen to know. I'm married to a fi- compliance professional. And it is a way to get in, and once you, and I agree, once you are in the bank, then you can pretty much go to the business side much more easily. That's but going right. straight into the business side is way hard. And compliance is hot. Yes. Compliance has I would turn hot, it into so. a positive. You know, the Great Recession was a failure of accounting. If accountants had been doing their job, we would not have had That's that. Right. So he ought to turn this into his advantage say, you know, this is what you need right now yeah. as a guy who can do this. Somebody right. keep an eye on the book. That's right. Yeah. And, That's and, right. And, and maybe it's, a, maybe it's, a, it's an analyst role. Yeah. You know? um, hold on. i got to go back. Megan's like totally badgering me. We've been on the air for uh, a long time, but we've right. got a lot going on in the chat room. It's so fabulous. Um, okay. Lynette wants to know, she's in the chat room, do I put what I made before or after? Meaning like, do you put... What if your salary has changed pretty dramatically? I made when I had the job I loved, I was making a hundred, and now I took the crap job and I'm making fifty. So what do you do, Jack? Go with the high number. Go high. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go high. All right. Okay. And throw in the bonus. Yeah. Whatever the extras I would, are. I would know. go. I would go high. All right. Um, Andrew Could wants. Be read two um, different ways, but. Okay. Andrew says some employers don't want their employees to leave in two years for grad school. They want long-term employees. But if you say no, then they will think I'm not interested in higher education and learning more. So you go to a job and they sort of say, well, you're thinking about going to grad school. You're a young employee. What, mm-hmm. should, you, what should your answer be? <laughs> he 
she's thinking. I know. I'm, I totally. Thinking, I love I'm this. I'm thinking this was a. That's an interesting question. I mean, you want to improve your. Obviously, you're 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 someone who's motivated, interested in your career. Uh, if you can prove your values sufficiently to the company, perhaps you can even work out a, a situation. I've I've had plenty of uh, friends who have managed to. Uh, get that um, advanced degree while continuing to work at the company. Right. And maybe, uh, and maybe in two years, you're going to love me so much that you're going to actually, you know, yeah. you're actually going to subsidize my uh, graduate. <laughs> right. And, and, you, and, and maybe even saying that, maybe saying, you know what, if, if we determine that that's the best course to make me a better employee, then yes. sure, why not? Can that's you tell right. I was in sales? That's beautiful. <laughs> that, was, that was well put. Travis says, what are your feelings on marketing stunts, like delivering a mannequin arm with a note saying, I'd give my right arm for this job. Oh, 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 oh. Come Seriously? On. Seriously. <laughs> That's the question. I, Travis made, did not make this up. Like is it a job right in stand-up arm. comedy? Um, I would laugh my ass off if I got that. I'm sorry. That would be so awesome. Yeah. It would make me, I, I know, but it's a stunt. I would say that... Uh, the creep, the creep factor, is, <laughs> well, wait a is always is always on the on the on the line. There's a there's a slight silence of the lambs quality to that. Wow! Oh one. my you God! Know? You went from like a funny stunt to a murder. Well, I mean, I, you know, I mean, is it going to be? How's it going to be read? Uh, oh do you know the culture in the company? I and mean, right. if you know the people, right? Right. If you're if you're associated with the people, you can get perhaps take a a couple more chances. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you you know this business. Um, you can do some things to stand out, but um, that one could be that one could be read a little bit. What strange. about you know how Ben Brantley got his job at the Washington Post? Right, what he told Catherine Graham. I can't actually say it on the radio, but <gasps> you he, can. It's he, the web. No, he said he would give something also, oh, but it was something not, else. Not, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Wow. okay, okay yeah. I love that. Worked for him. Yeah. Okay, um, let me ask you another question. How far can you go to get their attention or stand out from the crowd, Travis? Is, that's his follow up. Okay, similar kind of uh, similar kind of question. I mean. Um, you got to know the people. Obviously, people are, yeah, people are looking at thousands of resumes. Um, at social events, people are looking at hundreds of business cards. I mean, if you can find a way of presenting yourself, right, um, within the business rules, and you take it totally off of the, uh, you could send a, you could send a singing clown in with a bunch of balloons. It's probably not going to impress people the way that you want them to, right? You could, so, if you, but if you go back to like the trading world or the the retail brokerage room, if you send a girl to the boom boom room, you might get your resume right. Yeah, that's a different culture. That's a, though. really you gotta know the culture. Uh, Jerry know. Della Femina is a great ad guy. You guys probably yep. know him. Um, he got yes. his first job in that business. He was a messenger, but he got a job by putting together ads for the company, kind of sassy ads. He'd clip out magazine photographs from like Life and write the copy. So and send great. them to the CEO. You that's know, so that's thing. something that fit in with the culture. It showed the skill he would bring. You know, if it's not a comedy job, your left arm isn't that funny. So think of something in the context of what the job it's is. It's got to be. It's got to be in the context, and you got to start understanding the culture of the place. That's amazing. I love this. This is fabulous. We've had a fabulous time. But however, Megan says it's. We're going to get the. It's gong. all over. It's. Uh, I'm so glad we have had this time together. Yes. Now you see if you use a reference from Carol Burnett, just to 19, share a laugh or and sing, sing a song. song. Yeah. It seems we just get started, and before you know it, comes the time you have, have to say, to say so, so long and do that. Yeah, yeah. And do the ear thing. I'll so I feel young. young. This is awesome. Is that good? You don't know this. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> By the way, we're the same age. You just didn't watch as much television <laughs> as I did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching Ask the Experts and for everyone in the chat room who participated. Matthew, of course, Rothenberg. Read his blog at, um, on moneywatch.com. And uh, we'll have you back because we're that. going to have to chew up these last uh, these numbers and keep helping people out, right? That's, a, uh, that's absolutely right. So. Thank you so much for Thanks joining for us. Matthew me. Rothenberg. I am Jill Schlesinger. I'm Jack Otter. And we'll see you next week for Ask the Experts here on moneywatch.com.